stand in need of, Lord. You know this thing called life. You know what we're faced with. You know our uprising and our downsides. You are well acquainted with all of our ways. We thank you for your presence in this place, Lord. Have your way in every way. Uplift somebody. Encourage somebody. Increase someone's faith. Most of all, Lord, if there's someone here that doesn't know you, Lord, we ask that salvation be made available to them tonight. Let your will be done. We'll be careful to give you the honor, the glory, and the praise. In Jesus' name we pray. And everybody says, Amen. 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 For a brief space of time, I want to go into the word of the Lord. And our text this evening will be found in the book of Matthew, chapter number 21. And I'm going to read about 13 verses, and I'm going to make some comments, and I'll be out of the way. And it reads, at verse 33, Matthew 21, verse 33, and it says, Here another parable, there was a certain landowner who planted a vineyard and set a hedge around it, dug a wine press in it and built a tower. And he leased it to the vine dressers and went into a far country. Now when the vintage time drew near, 
he sent his servants to the vine dressers that they might receive its fruit. And the vine dresser took his servants, beat one, killed one, and stoned another. Again, he sent other servants, more than the first, and they did likewise to them. Then last of all, he sent his son to them. Surely they will respect my son. But when the vine dressers saw the son, they said among themselves, this is the heir. Come, let us kill him and seize his inheritance. So they, and they killed him. Therefore, when the owner of the vineyard comes, what will he do to these vine dressers? They said to him, he will destroy those wicked, mean, miserable, and leave his vineyard, and lease his vineyard to other vine dressers who will render to him the fruits in their season. Jesus said to them, Have you never read in the scriptures the stone which the builders have rejected has become the chief cornerstone, and it is marvelous in our eyes? Therefore I say to you, the kingdom of God will be taken from you and given to another nation bearing the fruit of it. And whoever falls on this stone will be broken. But whoever falls, it falls, it will grind him to power. Now when the chief priests and Pharisees heard these parables, they perceived that he was speaking of them. But when they sought to lay hands on him, they feared the multitude because they took him to be do not reject, but accept. This parable that Jesus is giving is a direct result of the questions that the religious people of his day had. They wanted to know and loving people and dealing with those that were less fortunate and downtrodden. So all he was ever accused of really was doing that which was good. So now they're upset. Because after he cleanses the temple, he's healing blind people, and he's healing the lame. And so they asked him a question. By what authority? They always had a problem with Jesus because Jesus did not go to their school. Jesus looked different. Jesus talked different. He carried himself different in the public spectrum. And so they noticed it was something about him, but he was well educated because he was God incarnate. And so they asked him this question, and so Jesus said, before I answer that question, I'm going to ask you a question. Was John's baptism, was it from heaven or was it from men? In other words, Jesus knew by posing that question to them that they would be in a, in a position or a place that they really couldn't answer the question. And they understood that, that they really couldn't answer it. Because if we say uh, John's baptism is of heaven, then we should obey what John said. But if we say it's of men that are around that hear this, they will be upset because they also recognize John as a prophet. So Jesus goes on and he deals with two parables. This is the second of two. The first parable, he talked about how these two sons, one was asked to do something and they refused to do it, but then they relented and they went and did it. The second son was asked to do it and he never went and did it. And Jesus asked the question. Which one of them did God's will? Which one of them did right? They said the first. So they understood. Yet he went out and he did it. They answered right. So now Jesus says, here's another parable. Here was a landowner that owned an entire vineyard. And this landowner took time to set up his vineyard like he wanted the landowner in this parable represents God. The landowner, he builds, a, a, he plants a vineyard and he sets a hedge around it. He puts a fence around it. He takes careful time. He digs a wine press. He builds a tower and they're supposed to know what to do. Hmm. The farmers are supposed to take the grapes and make some wine. Part of the lease agreement was for the landowner was when the vintage time is ready. I'll send my servant to get me some new wine. And what happens? 
the landowner who represents God, he sends servants to get some wine. Because this is part of the agreement. They get there. Our text tells us that they beat the servant. Mm. So the landowner says, okay, maybe it's a misunderstanding. Mm. He sends another one. Another servant. They kill this one. Mm. He turns around and he sends another one. And they stone him. Mm. What's going on? Why would the landowner keep sending people? This is a glimpse for us to look into this parable and see that the mercy of God, he's constantly sending us messengers, sending us messages, things that can help us to deal with this thing called life. And we don't have to go through life on our own. Mm. We can lean on Jesus. We can lean on the power of the Spirit. This is what relationship is all about. We need help. We cannot make it throughout this life without the Lord. Amen. He that buildeth without the Lord, they are building in vain, except the Lord builds the house. And so here it was. So Jesus asked the question. He says, so uh, uh, what should the landowner do to these individuals who respected me? I sent them several messages several messages, several servants, and they have disrespected them. I tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to send my own son. Mm. The gospel according to Mark said it was his only son. Like John says, his only begotten son. He's yet extending mercy and he sends servant after servant. Now he sends someone greater than the servant. He sends his own son. The farmers, the vine dressers, take the sun outside of the vineyard. And they kill him. They conspired. They said, if we kill him, we can just take over everything. Mm. What foolishness. So here it is. They kill the sun. Jesus is the sun mm. in the parable. He's telling these religious people that are asking by what authority do you do this? What authority do you come in? They said, Jesus says, and he quotes what the book of Psalms says. This is the stone which the builders rejected. Jesus, what are you doing? Here you are wondering where I got this power from. I come here, I'm on a mission, and I'm going to die for the sins of the world. But you are so smart. You're so educated. You killed the prophets that came before me. The Bible says Isaiah was sawn asunder. Zechariah went through. Malachi went through. Jeremiah went through. These prophets were thrown in prison, treated ill because they tried to warn a people of Messiah's coming. And this is how we must do it. This is how we must live in such a crooked and perverse generation. But they did not receive the prophets. They rejected them. That's what's here. In the servants, these are the prophets. These are the ones that came with message after message after message, but they were not receiving. So they killed the son. Jesus, what are you telling these individuals? You know that they are going to kill you? That's exactly what Jesus thought. He's foretelling of his death. Of a dishonorable death. That I'm the son and I am the stone which you builders have rejected. But I'm the same stone. Now that is the chief mm -hmm. of the corn. So I tried to do this text justice in this short period of time. But I want you to take note. The stone is a critical part of the structure. This is what holds everything together. God. But they were trying to build the kingdom of God without Jesus. You can't build without Jesus. I don't care how much education you get. Amen. I don't care how much traveling you do. I don't care what your aspirations and desires in life is about. If you try to build 
without Jesus, you're just as guilty as these that killed the son, these that rejected the stone. You're just as guilty. It goes on to say, what should happen to these? They responded to this. They should be dealt with by the landowner. They pronounced their own judgment. Mm. Their own judgment. You would think by now, Jesus giving this parable, it would have opened their eyes. And they would have recognized who he was. They saw what he was doing, but yet they were rejecting him. So God was showing his mercy by continuously sending people. God was also showing that there will be judgment if this stone which you have rejected if it fall on you, it will crush you in judgment. Look at what they said after Jesus explained to them about this parable. Verse 45. Now, when the chief priests and Pharisees heard this parable, they perceived that he was speaking of them. Now, they feared the multitude because they took him to be a prophet. Even after clear explanation, they still wanted to kill Jesus. Mm -hmm. But it was no problem. Jesus understood his purpose and his mission. I am the stone which the builders have rejected. But I have become a glorious and an honorable stone. Anybody can be ordained. And that which Jesus Christ Amen. is at the foundation. We need Jesus more than ever before. Let's not be like those who should have known the scriptures, Jesus said, have you not read? You should have known. You are religious. You read your Bible. You should have known that scripture. But you didn't read it. You didn't allow it. And, you, and understand that this is the most important thing you can do is accept Jesus. I'm reminded of a story of a young man, a little boy, who was raised in church. And this boy had rebelled. He didn't want anything to do. He didn't, he didn't care for the gospel. So when he was 12 years old, he started smoking weed, started smoking marijuana. When he was 14, he started selling marijuana. When he was 17, he started selling harsher drugs. And he became a big time drug dealer. When he was 19, folks tried to kill him. And he survived after being shot on a couple of occasions. When he was 22, he found himself in a courtroom mm. facing life in prison mm. without parole. He had been rejecting Jesus all his life. But when he turned 23, mm. God had humbled him and he had accepted Jesus. And he was like the psalmist in Psalms chapter 34. This poor man cried. And the Lord heard him. Yes. And delivered him out of all of his trouble. That's not just a story. That's my story. Mm. That's where I come from. And I'm here to tell you today, this is the Lord's doing. Yes. And it's marvelous in our eyes. He can turn any situation around. What looks hopeless, what looks like there is no chance that it will never be, Jesus can turn it around. Yes. 
But the key is, will you come to the stone mm. and embrace him and accept him? Or will you reject him? My friend, in closing, if you reject him, the stone will crush you in judgment. Don't let it be so. Jesus foretold of his death. He foretold of his resurrection. And he foretold that he is coming back. This world is fleeting away and everything that's in it. The only thing that will last, every head bow. Father, once again, I've striven to give what you gave me to your people. And you know who's here. And by chance, if there's somebody here that does not know Jesus, and you want to know Jesus, Heads bowed, you can just raise your hand and say, that's me. I, I don't want to reject him. I don't want the stone to crush. I understand these messages that I've been hearing and someone has been telling me about the gospel. I don't want to really have to simply do is acknowledge that you are a sinner in need of a Savior. And Jesus Christ is the only Savior. And ask him, come into my heart. Make radical changes, was ever needed. Change me, Lord. I don't want to reject you. The day you hear his voice, harden not your heart. Receive him. This could be the best day of the rest of your life. Mm -hmm. Talk to him. Say, it's me, O oh Lord, standing in the salvation. Lord, I commend all into your hands. Let your will be done. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. God bless you.